Hi, welcome to the bonus content of Power Academy. This is the bonus tips and tricks for any various situations. As we know in bowling, we can only control what we can control. So I'm going to give you some advices and tips how to handle similar situations. Uh, some of them you might know, you might have heard before, and maybe some you didn't. And I hope you're going to find this segment helpful. Good luck. Has that ever happened to you that you are in cold weather and suddenly your fingers really shrink and you have six balls to where your grips are too big and you don't really know what to do because you're bowling a tournament and you don't have enough time? I really recommend, that's a trick I learned in Kegel Training Center, to put something in between the grip and the bowling ball. And that's something I found that the best to be someone's business card. The thickness is best. You have to cut it and just slide it in between and that's why it's important how you glue your grips. However, if you constantly struggle with your hands and fingers shrinking or getting more swollen and you feel like your grips never really fit you well, I truly like recommend the vacuum grip. It's a very old school technique of gluing the grip. It's where the hole of the fingers is bigger than the diameter of the grip. So that way you glue it on the bottom and when you put the finger the grip expands to whatever it needs to expand so that way you can fit your finger. It's really good. I used to use it for many, many years and I was really satisfied and happy with it. When you're bowling a lot of games and it's really humid and hot outside, it happens very often that our fingers really swell up and then you find yourself on the approach competing, unable to really put the finger inside the insert. There is one trick I have for you and you might not love it at first, but it works 100 percent of times it's to lick the outer part of your finger so that way you can insert it easier inside the grip it works every single time and i really recommend it do you suffer a lot of blisters and cuts when you bowl if you do i'm sure it happened to you in the middle of a competition and you had to put a skin patch but because the rhythm is so fast you don't really have time for it to dry out and it's very stressful my tip for you is to light it on fire I know it sounds crazy, but what you do, you put skin patch like you always do, and then you proceed to light on fire and blow. It helps it seals a lot faster and it dries out instantly. If you bowl in the various bowling centers, I'm sure that sometimes you have problems with the approaches. Sometimes they're more too tacky, sometimes they're too slippery. And when we change the whole sole or the whole heel, it just seems to be too much of a difference. In 2017, I have signed my contract with 3G Shoes and that's when I have discovered clits. Clits are those little round circles that you can just put on your shoe and you can mix and match them however you want. So let me show you how I do it. I have multiple clits under my shoe and if uh, the approaches are too slippery, I will just change one or two instead of having to change the whole sole. The difference is a lot less drastic, which makes it a lot easier to make any type of alternation during the competition. It might happen that you don't have 3G shoes, which is completely okay. I really recommend you that you take your soles and you cut it in two or three different parts. That way, when the approaches get too tacky or too slippery, you don't have to change the whole sole. You can just exchange one part of it, either a half of it or one third. It's however you prefer it. And I'm sure that changing it during the competition is going to be a lot less stressful as the difference is not going to be so drastic. When we are nervous, stressed, when we're competing, things don't seem the same. Uh, we tend to focus on a lot of different things from physical game to the scores. But what if two lanes are completely different and they play different and you have to memorize where you're standing and where you're looking. Sometimes it gets really hard, you know? So one of the tips I have for you is that you can write down your lines either in your notebook or you can write it down on your palm. I know it sounds a little silly, but it really helps when you are setting up on the approach and you are unsure where to stand. You can just look on your palm and be like, all right, that's where I stood. That's where I'm going to start. It gives you an ease and a sense of uh, comfort knowing exactly where you're standing and you don't have to double guess yourself and doubt your moves or your lines. 
you can also write things down on your shoe. I'm 100% sure you have seen it on some bowlers. It's a very old technique that I have seen in very old bowlers and new bowlers. For example, if you struggle with walking too fast, some, you can just write on your shoe slow. So anytime you're getting lined up, you're trying to set yourself on the approach, when you look down, you can see right in the middle of your shoe, slow, which means that you have to walk slower. Those approaches, when you tried everything, change every heel and every sole in order to be able to slide and you still stick. It's a problem that many people might run into in some bowling centers. And one of the tips that I have learned from old school bowlers is that they would just put sock on top of their shoe. Literally, you take a sock, you slide on top of your shoe and you should be able to slide a lot easier. Some approaches seem to be too slippery, but not slippery enough for you to change the heel or sole. There is one thing you can do that a lot of professional bowlers do it, and I'm sure you might have seen it when you were watching bowling on TV or even YouTube videos. You basically lick the finger and put it on the bottom of your shoe. That gives it a little bit more moisture for you to be able to stop the slide. In bowling, physical game and technique is really important to be able to repeat your shots. However, where we repeat them is just as important. So knowing where to stand and where to look and how to figure out where you have to slide and where you have to throw the ball is just as important. And a lot of people struggle to really see the picture, to know where it's dry and when it, there's oil on the lane. So one of my tips I have for you is that wherever you're coming to a new environment, new bowling center, or it's a new pattern, always start from the right. Always check if the gutter plays, if it hooks. If it keeps hooking too much, you're going to keep moving left. If it doesn't hook enough, you're also going to get closer to the pocket. It's just going to give you a, a perception of the lane. You're going to know exactly where it hooks and when it doesn't. So if it happens that the gutter really plays very well, you're going to see dry and then you're going to keep moving left. Did you know professional bowlers use glue not just to glue things, but also their fingers? Yeah, I know. It sounds a bit crazy, but we do it very often. It depends on the type of a cut that you have, but many times you can just glue your cut and it's super instant, it holds very well, and that's one of the best alternatives to the skin patch. I'm 100% sure you have heard it, not just even from the bowlers, but from the other athletes. But I wouldn't be myself if I didn't tell you about it. You have to ice your injuries. Anytime you're done bowling or doing any other type of physical activity, just ice whatever hurts. Ice really helps with reducing inflammation and even in preventing any further injuries in the future. Just ask the bartender to give you some ice and ice whatever hurts. Make sure you don't do it for more than 10 minutes. I really recommend to put it straight on the injury. I, you would do it in the past through towels, but I realize it doesn't get cold enough. I can also recommend you some products from Amazon. This is what I have, this is what I use. Uh, it's actually uh, Verity's idea. She's been traveling with it for all year on PWBA tour. And I also proceed to buy it because it's very convenient to get ice inside it. Ice will hurt, take ice out, put it in the backpack, and that way you never forget to carry it with you. Warm up. I'm sure you've heard about the importance of warming up before any physical activity, but I need to tell you, you have to warm up. My dad used to tell me that muscles are like cheese. When cheese is hard, it's just so easy to break it. But when the cheese is warm, no matter what you do, it doesn't really break. That's how our muscles work. If your muscles are cold, it's just so easy to turn anything, to get any type of injury. But when you warm it up, it just so much harder to harm yourself. So one of the easy ways of warming up your forearm is just to grab anything, let it be a towel, and really squeeze it really hard and really fast until you feel like your hand is getting fatigued and tired and warm at the same time. You can do any type of different exercise. You can squeeze anything you want. This is one way of how you can warm up your forearm. And it takes zero effort, but it can prevent you from lifelong injuries. When you draw a bowling ball and you draw thumbs, you want to make sure that the thumb is big enough to fit one, two, three, or a few tapes inside it. So that way when you swallow up, 
you can always take it out and still can keep using the ball. But it does happen that your thumb gets so big that no matter how many tapes you take out, you still cannot put it in. There's one technique that you might have heard about because it's nothing new, but maybe if you did it, it can really save you. You're gonna take a napkin and you're gonna try to press the thumb inside the hole with the napkin. It's gonna help the thumb to get a little bit smaller and you're gonna be doing it a few times, then you take it out and I'm sure you're gonna be able to put the thumb in your thumb hole with no problem. Okay, that's all I have for you. I hope you're gonna find it useful. I hope that if you, if you happen to struggle and run into any of the scenarios I was just describing, you're gonna remember what I said. You're gonna be like, oh wow, yeah, I know how I can get out of the situation. I know what I can do. I hope you're gonna remember it. And if you don't, I hope you're gonna be coming back here, refreshing your knowledge. Thanks so much for being part of my team and being a part of Power Academy.